Praise the Lord. Rise up as we pray together, preparing ourselves for the word of God. That all the Lord has been teaching us will bear fruit in our lives. And that all the vision that is given unto us, what he wants done, what he wants accomplished, that they will be done. And you will be the tool and the instrument that the Lord will use. The Lord will use you. I said the Lord will use you. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. And say, Lord, whatever you still need to do in my life, Lord, do it. I'm wholly available. I want to serve the Lord. Wholly available. I'll serve the Lord. I'm going to bring everything I have. All the training I've got. All the knowledge I have. I'm going to surrender, submit everything to the Lord. To be used mightily of him. In Jesus name we pray. Yeah. And the good anointed people of God said. Yeah. Heavenly Father we thank you today and bless your name. We thank you Lord for the great things you are revealing to us. Lord we pray we will not be tired of hearing you in Jesus name. And we will not be dull of hearing. We'll hear and do it. We'll hear and teach it. We'll hear and pass it on. And we'll hear and perform your will, your word, in Jesus' name. Once again, Lord, open our eyes to see. Our minds to understand. And give us the courage of conviction to get this work done. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Amen. I pray that God will affirm your amen. Yeah. Good time, good people. God bless you. We're looking at Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. We're looking at verse 3. Every place the soul of a foot shall tread upon. That have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Verse 5, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail you, I will not forsake you. In verse 6, be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them the seven only be strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee to not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper you will prosper whithersoever thou goest this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, only then, thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God, tell me, is with you. Is with thee whithersoever thou goest. You need an amen there. Amen. We're talking about the courage of conviction. Uh, you know, there are people that seem to have courage, but... I'm asking them, what's the purpose of your courage? What's the direction of your courage? What's going to be the result of your courage? You know, the people are strong as a lion, as bold as a lion, as courageous as a lion, but there's no vision. There's no conviction. 
and there is nothing there is no project they want to get done they are just bold they are fearless they are courageous what i'm saying to what are you putting the courage and to what are you applying the boldness and the fearlessness you have if there is courage if there is boldness and if there's fearlessness there must be something you want to do that you know i'm going to get this done come what may when the lord told joshua and said be of good courage there was an assignment and he's saying as long as you are following through on that assignment and you know that this is what you do be of good courage be courageous be fearless and be bold but if there is nothing to do you don't need any courage who needs courage to go to bed and to sleep who needs courage to sit down only to eat and to eat i don't think that needs courage who needs courage to be able to you know, just walk around and loaf around and roam about that doesn't need courage if there's good to be courage it means there is something to do and i have something to do i said i have something to do and it is that the lord has committed into your heart it says this is what to do walk through the land every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon that i have given unto you but just you understand there will be people that will contest that which i've given you to do there are people that will stand against that that have assigned for you to do it is because of those that will oppose those that will contest those that will say hey what are you doing here and joshua is saying the place belongs to me everything is mine every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon in the name of jesus it shall be yours now think about that you need to think about that every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon if your foot or your feet if they tread upon a square kilometer that's all you have if they tread about four square kilometers that's all you have if it's 400 kilometers that's all you have it depends on you it, you limit where you get to but if you say giants are there my feet cannot get there you not possess it mountains are there and i cannot possess that and your feet do not tread on those places because they are mountains you not get them if you say well there is something going conflict is going over there i cannot get there the sons of the anax and Akas anax are there i cannot walk there it's only where your feet will get to that's why you will possess that's why and joshua had been in that land before he's been there before with caleb and all the other ten spies and he saw all those giants and he saw those sons of anakims and then those some people said we cannot make it that's why the lord is saying now don't you remember what those people said look at your god i will never leave you i will never forsake you and i'm sending you places don't look at their faces every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon i have tell me aloud giving unto you and therefore joshua you need courage the same thing i come to tell you today we're going to possess the land you, you, if there's no assignment and no responsibility and no duty and there's no preaching and there's nothing we're doing who needs courage to be a nobody who needs courage to be a failure who needs courage to be a lazy man who needs courage to be a non-achiever if you're going to be an achiever you need courage that's what the lord is telling us say go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature you go you go you go into all the world and preaching the gospel to every creature that is what demands courage and the lord is going to give us that courage the life and the spirit and the mind and the strength of a conqueror that's what the lord is telling us he says in verse 9 look at verse 9 again he says have not i commanded thee it's not this my commandment to you unto you be strong and of a good courage be not tell me be not afraid neither be thou dismayed for the lord thy god is with thee whithersoever thou goest he will be with you you see greater than the canaanites of course you see greater than the philistines of course you see greater than the amalekites of course the greater one 
the mighty one, the high and the holy one, the alpha and the omega, the one that never lost any battle. He said, I will be with you. What have you got to fear when the creator of the heavens and the earth says, I will be with you? And he said, Am I not the one that commanded you to go? And then underneath you are the everlasting arms. And I'm by your side every time. And I will be with you. Like I, I was with Moses. Don't you know then there is nothing on earth. And nothing in the pit of hell to be afraid of. Go. And I'm going with you. That's why we need the courage of conviction. You have to have a conviction. Number one. The conviction that God is with me. He is on my right hand. He is on my left hand. He is in front of me. He is following after me. He is also overshadowing me. He is even supporting me with his mighty hand. It says that's the conviction I have. Because of that conviction I have, that is why there is courage. Why? Because all this land I see here on the west, here at the east, here in the north, here to the south, everything belongs to me. All I have to do is not to be lazy and to wake up in the morning, get up in the morning and keep on walking and keep on walking. And every place I have the footprint of my feet, I'm going to possess that place. And because that is my conviction, that's why he says, I must have courage for that conviction to come to pass. And then he says, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life i will meet many people you know the human mind is always afraid of a stranger you know why we don't know what the stranger has in his pocket we don't know what the stranger has in his mind we do not know what the stranger is planning we don't know what is churning in his head whenever he's scratching his head we don't know what he wants to scratch out of his head and because he's a stranger and we don't know we are afraid of the unknown and then the lord has said no man whatever is in their head whatever is in their tummy whatever is in their mind whatever is in their pocket that they want to break out on whatever charm they have and whatever talisman man they have and he says no man shall be able to stand before you that is the conviction that a child of god has and because of that because of that conviction that is why you have the courage not only that this promise is just not for you a uh, joshua this one was given to moses not only that it was given to jacob not only that it was given to isaac not only that it was given to abraham and this is what the lord has promised abraham his friend and Abraham has done everything he ought to do. Abraham is a friend of God. And he has gone to heaven. And God says, my covenant with Abraham, I will not break. I've given all this land to Abraham. And you are here now so that you'll be able to take that possession on behalf of Abraham. Because of that conviction that God will not fail Abraham because of that conviction that this is an everlasting covenant there is courage in your heart that what the Lord has given you to do is a doable thing is a possible thing is going to be done I said it's going to be done the Lord has given the earth unto his only begotten son. And he said, ask of me. And I will. It was talking to the Lord Jesus Christ, you know. Come on. And look at that. Psalm 2. Look at that Psalm 2. I'm going to read to you now from verse 6. Before we come to verse 8. Look at Psalm 2. We're looking at it from verse 6. And you'll see that he's talking to the Lord Jesus Christ. In Psalm 2 verse, eight, verse 6. Yet... Have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion? I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son. Who is that son? Give me his name. Shout out his name. He said, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Then he said to the son, Ask of me. He said to the son, ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession. This uttermost part of the earth and all the heathen, he has told Jesus Christ, his only begotten son. He said, because you are my only begotten son, and I've set you up as a king upon my holy hill of Zion, ask me. 
all the uttermost part of the earth i will give unto thee and the son and as the father and the father has given the uttermost part of the earth unto him because of that conviction that we have that now everything belongs to christ sit on my right hand until i make all your enemies watch thy food stew and that has happened because jesus christ is now gone on high and because of the victory that he has already that's why we know we have the conviction that this earth and all these people they belong to the lord jesus christ and he has given us the commission now and he said go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and he says he that believeth and is baptized tell me out loud shall be saved he that believeth not tell me out loud shall be done that's the reason why because of that conviction we have we have the courage the courage of conviction and the lord is going to see us through and it is going to be done in jesus name i'm going to talk on three things number one cultivating bible based convictions cultivating bible based convictions you know you have to develop conviction there are people that are just wishy washy uh, believers and wishy washy christians and wishy washy ministers they do not have any conviction because they do not know what the bible requires and what the bible has stipulated bible based conviction cultivating that cultivating bible based convictions number two commitment to bible based convictions commitment you cultivate it you know that this is of god and this is from scripture it's not a hazy thing it's not a human idea it's not a human opinion it's not philosophy of man you know that this is coming out of the word of god and heaven and earth shall pass away but this my word shall never pass away and forever O oh lord this word is settled and because you know it's a settled thing it has a finality with it it has an authority with it it has the mark and the seal of heaven on it and it's a bible based conviction that's why you cultivate it and that's why you commit your life and you commit yourself unto it commitment to bible based convictions number three courage for bible based conviction courage for bible based conviction we're looking at number one tell me out number one say it like you want to do it say it like it's part of you already cultivating bible based convictions bible based hey, let's look at it what the lord is telling us in deuteronomy chapter 4 deuteronomy chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 1 deuteronomy chapter 4 we're looking at it from verse 1 it says now therefore hacking o israel unto the statutes and unto the judgments which i teach you for to do them that she may live and go in and possess the land which the lord thy god the lord god of thy fa of your fathers giveth you ye shall not urge unto the word which i command you neither shall ye diminish aught from it that she may keep the commandments of the lord your god which i command you he is telling us that he gave them the word look at this he gave them the land he gave them the word think about that he gave them the land he gave them the word he gave them the inheritance and he gave them his word and he said there's one condition here there's a connection there is a link between the inheritance and the word if you want the totality of the inheritance and you want everything to belong to you then you must keep to the totality of the word you will not add to it you will not subtract with it because i i, I attach the giving of that land and the surrender of that land and your possession of that land to the obedience of the totality of the word of god isn't that what the lord is telling us there's an association between our inheritance of the mansions on high and obedience to the word he has given us he said because of that connection that will never be broken because of that connection that will never be stopped because of that connection that nobody can contradict that's why if you're looking at the mansions on high in my father's house uh, there is, um, any mansions if you also i would have 
told you, I go to prepare a place for you. That place I've gone to prepare for you. That's your heavenly inheritance. And it is connected to the word of God. And it is as you're keeping the word, holding on to the word, the totality of the word, then that inheritance will be yours. That's what was telling the children of Israel. I give you the inheritance. I give you the land on one condition that this watch I give unto you, you are going to take everything. You will not diminish. That means you will not surprise. You will not add anything unto it. He told them in verse 1, he said, the land which the Lord your God, God of your fathers, giveth you. Immediately after that, he said, now the word is attached to that. The word is linked to that. The word is connected to that. Keep the whole word. Don't take it away. Eh, that's why, that's why they have to have Bible-based conviction. That our conviction is we need to keep this word nothing must touch this word nothing must subtract from this word because it is the keeping of that word it is the commitment to that word and it is the obedience to that word and it is the consecration dedication to that word that will make us to be able to inherit all the land he has given unto us you read the word of god and out of the word of god you cultivate a kind of conviction and say my life might be on the line but the word i'm going to keep that word dangers might be there troubles might be there and persecutors might be there the pain might be there i might have to cross many roads but all the same i'm committed to the word because my conviction is that this word is the final thing there's nothing higher nothing above the word of god in this life in your life or your family you cultivate a bible based conviction we're looking at chapter 12 Chapter 12 of Deuteronomy, verse 32. In verse 32, what things soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. Again, he's telling us there, you see, everything I've commanded. And that's, a, that's how we build up conviction. You know, there are some people that say, I don't do this, and I'm asking them why. That's just my conviction. What's it just a conviction? What's the ground of that conviction? What's the basis of that conviction? What is the reason for that conviction? How did you just, you know, plunge yourself into some captivity like that? Into imprisonment like that? This is what I'm going to do. On what is, on what foundation is that conviction? Our conviction must be on the foundation of the word of God. Because of that Bible passage. Because of that instruction of the Lord. And because of that commandment of the Lord Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. This is what I am committed to. That is what gives us real conviction. You cultivate Bible-based conviction. We're looking at uh, Proverbs chapter 13. Proverbs chapter 13. I'm reading from verses 5 and 6. The people who don't read the word of God don't have any conviction. They don't have any lasting conviction. They don't have enduring conviction. They don't have heaven rewarded conviction. It's the people that read their Bible and they know that this is the word of the Lord and this is the will of the Lord. Those are the people that have real substantial conviction. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 13. And I'm reading there from verses 5 and 6. Proverbs chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. Every word of God is pure. And that's why you have conviction. That's what your conviction is based upon. Every word of God is pure. You read from the old to the new. You read the historical part and then the a prophetic part. And you read the gospel part. Then you read the history of the church. Every part of the Bible. And the Lord is saying every word of the Lord is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Arch thou not unto his words. The conviction you have is that the word is sufficient and the word is final and the word is full enough and the word is infallible because you know there is no fault in it. It's infallible. It's the product of the might of the Almighty inspired and breathed out from the Lord himself and because of that conviction that you have that these are not ideas of men but holy men of old. They wrote and they spoke these things and they were moved by the Holy Ghost and you know that God is committed to every judge 
each and every title of the word to fulfill it. That's the reason why you base your conviction on the Bible, the word of God. It says in verse 6, Art thou not unto, the, unto his word? Lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. I pray that God will help us to keep to this word in totality in Jesus' name. We're looking at John. We're looking at John chapter 3. Bible-based conviction. John chapter 3. We're looking at it from verse 3 to verse 5. The conviction that the Lord has given us according to the word, according to the Bible, according to the very word coming out of the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ. In John chapter 3 verse 3, Jesus answered, and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except, except, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. When you have that conviction, then you are not going to be telling stories in your church. You are going to be making sure that everybody that comes into that church, they hear the word of salvation. Everybody coming to that church, they hear the word of repentance. Everyone coming to that church, you are not interested just in their money. You are not interested in their position in life. You are not interested in their authority in life you're not interested of the, in the connections they have in life the one thing you're interested the first thing you're interested in and the primary thing you are interested in is that he must be born again you see my friend he must be born again he is you see my neighbor he must be born again you see a, a helper in my office he must be born again i see those some good to me and i really love him he must be born again because the conviction the lord has given us is that except a man except a woman except anybody living on the surface of the earth except he's born again he cannot see the kingdom of god you see my son you see my daughter you see my father is she my mother and i love him or i love her except he is born again he cannot see the kingdom of god the conviction you have that if there is any urgency to give to anybody if there's anything to impart into anybody's life it is this new birth experience that's why you can I'll just live with somebody and stay with somebody and never find out are you born again are you a child of god have you confessed all your sins to the lord as the lord forgiving you are you really a bona fide child of god living a victorious life because of the conviction you have that no matter what money they have no matter what position they possess and no matter what high siege they're sitting upon if they are not born again they'll be forever lost because of that conviction that's why you're going out every everywhere every village every city every community ye must be born again look at that again and base your conviction on this so that we're not just having church assembly and club and gathering people together you are telling you're not just uh, making them happy when they come to church you are telling them have you been born again you've been coming to this a local church for a long time are you born again look at it again in chapter 3 verse 3 jesus answered and said unto him Verily, verily, truly, truly, certainly, certainly, assuredly, without any shadow of doubt, I'm telling you that except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What matters then, the number one thing that matters is this new birth, that the person must be born again. I'm looking at Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. And we're looking at the words of Jesus' conviction. Your conviction that is based on this reaching word of God and what Jesus Christ has spoken. Luke chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 3. I tell you nay, but except ye repent ye shall all likewise perish the lord was talking to these religious jews and he said hey, there's something you need number one the priority of life is to repent and turn to the lord the same has been born again that you turn away from your sin you believe on the lord jesus christ and then something will change in your heart in your life and something will change all around you and he said nay but except ye repent ye shall all likewise perish look at verse 4 and verse 5 or those 18 upon whom the tower of shalom fell and slew them think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwell in jerusalem i tell you nay but except ye repent ye shall all likewise perish 
when you when you know that that you know just like you know two and two make four and you know that this is the unchanging unchangeable word of god that except there is repentance that the people will perish it will give you conviction a grounded conviction an unshakable conviction and you'll be committed to that the thing that will be important to you is not to you know make people walk and make people do this and make people do that and smile with them and have fellowship with them and love them and pat them at the back and just say wonderful wonderful time you want to make sure there's no hidden sin you want to make sure there's no besetting sin you want to make sure there is no sin that will drag them into hellfire because the words of the lord jesus christ is except 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 you repent ye shall all likewise perish we're looking at mark chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 34 mark chapter 8 verse 34 and it's when you read all these words that you have a bible based conviction and you say this is this is where i stand and there's nothing that can change this because god will not change and jesus will not change and the condition of getting to heaven will not change and because of that this is my conviction this is where i stand on and then you go back after this congress you go back to your location you go back to your church location and then you want to emphasize it because you know all these people that are coming in their multitudes except they have repented except they are born again we will miss them when we get up there to glory if that is your conviction you'll be bold and fearless and courageous so declare it unto the people we're looking at mark chapter 8 verse 34 and when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also he said unto them whosoever whosoever will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me for whosoever will save his life shall lose it whosoever will save his life shall lose it if that's your conviction you're, you're going to behave in a different way that whosoever will save his life you know what that means whosoever will protect his life and preserve his life i don't want to die i don't want to get into any danger i just want to you know i want to live long. why do you want to live long eternity is beautiful heaven is beautiful heaven is good if you want to die today and you die in active service it will make it actually a little bit longer for you because those of us uh, who come later you would have been about maybe 10 years 20 years 30 years in heaven before we get there and then it when we get there we're still going to be there forever and ever and you would have spent about 30 years before we got there or you might have spent 50 years before the rest of us got there looks like you will enjoy even heaven more if you had been there before we got there why are you then you don't have conviction that heaven is beautiful that heaven is glorious or you say i don't want to die you want to die in active service for the glory of the lord and for the evangelization of the world in which we are living if you have the conviction not that conviction you're not going to be protecting your life and then preserving your life i don't want to do too much they say that when somebody is getting older it should you know go slowly because if not he may just one day his heart will just say pam then the heart has finished and the heart will not work anymore praise the lord sudden death and sudden glory i said praise the lord sudden death and sudden glory isn't that better than you know getting sick and if your heart just stops you know, you're walking and walking and running and jumping and going up and going down and then all of a sudden no sickness oh what joy and what delight should we go without any sickness and then we'll just go like that but isn't that better to die on active service than you know you're you're you're, you're just there laziness even brings a sickness you know that because when you're lazy and just sleeping like that you know you say can you give me some uh, already squashed there and <laughs> you give me this and this there you know you're itching and itching and the belly is getting burnt like this and then everything is getting fat and one day the heart will just say you 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 person i'm not going to carry you anymore i don't want to be i want, don't want my body to be like that how about you i said how about you i can't i can't hear you where are you you will not die like that active service for the lord in jesus name hey, look at that look at that verse it says for whosoever verse 35 will save his life shall lose it but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and for the gospel's sake the same shall save it give me a good amen, amen. for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul 
You understand that uh, God is saying, look up here for a moment. Uh, let's say this is a scale balance. And then you have a scale here and scale here. And the Lord is saying, put the whole world, all the money in the world, all the houses in the world, all the property in the world, all the certificates in the world, all the honor in the world. Put it on this scale and put your soul here. Your soul is still heavier and greater and higher and more precious than all the world. That's why he's saying, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever in versatility it therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my woes in this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he cometh into the in the glory of his father and with the holy angels the lord is coming i don't want him to meet me lazy and idle and indolent and not doing something you will do something for the lord bible based conviction develop that kind of cultivate that and the lord will help you and give you the grace to stand by that conviction in jesus name oh we're looking at we're looking at luke chapter chapter 16 luke chapter 16 i'm reading from verse 24 bible based conviction luke chapter 16 i'm reading from verse 24 it says, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, if you really believe that rich people will cry when you get to hell, if you really believe that people that have position and power and property and all these things of the world, that if they are not saved, they are not born again, that when they get to hell, they will cry, not just for one day, not just one week, not just for one year, they will cry all throughout eternity because the pain will be new every time. The pain will be terrible every moment for them for all eternity if that is your conviction and you you know sometimes when you're passing by and you see an accident and somebody is groaning in pain it grips your heart if that grips your heart that's a temporary thing what if that is to continue every moment for for a day every moment for a year every moment for 10 years what kind of pain are you going to have and when you know that when people go to hell it's going to be like that forever and ever for them and there is not going to be any decrease of their pain it's going to give you real conviction that if there's anything to do at all there's the thing to do to reach out to the lives of people the people who are dying in sin because their pain is gripping your heart because they are kind of predicament is pricking your heart and you're saying if there is anything to do i must do it at this time so that the people will not perish without a chance of repenting but this man already got to hell and we're told that he cried and said father abraham sent lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and call my tongue for i am tormented in this flame but abraham said son Remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. If you have the conviction that when we get to heaven, all the pain, when we get to heaven, all the labor, when we get to heaven, all the pressure, when we get to heaven, all the suffering, when we get to heaven, all the imprisonment, when we get to heaven, all the persecution will not matter anything. Five minutes in heaven. When the joy of the Lord overwhelms you, you'll forget everything that you have suffered. If you have that conviction, you will labor for heaven at this time. And you'll help other people to get to heaven as well. Then we are told in verse 26, beside all this, be between us and you, there is a great God fixed so that they which would pass from hands to you cannot neither can they that pass well and that can they pass to us that will come hence that will come from this if you know there's no truth in purgatory if you know that and when an unbeliever dies when a sinner dies he enters into hell that's final that's fine that's final for all eternity if you knew that you will do something for the sinners who are just rushing into hell like they don't know what's happening to them in the future if you need if you really had conviction that's a hell if you had conviction there is heaven you will want to depopulate hell and then populate heaven you want to get as many people as you can 
in Nigeria, in Ghana, in West Africa, East Africa, South Africa, Northern Africa. You want to spend your money and spend your life and spend your time. You want to make you, you want your wife to do it, your children to do it, everybody to do it. You, you count it as the most important thing, the most essential thing to be done to get people out of the way that leads to hell and get them to the way that leads to heaven. And that conviction is in your heart already. I said that conviction is there already And we're going to carry on and carry through With that conviction in Jesus name And then now it says And then in verse 27 I pray thee therefore father That thou wouldest send him To my father's house For I have five brethren That he may testify Unto them Lest they also come into this Place of torment And that man now had real conviction He had real conviction It was too late conviction that was too late he said i know something i have some five brethren they are in the world i know their lives i know the things they do and i know that if they continue like that they will end up with me over here in hell and i don't want that see a man in hell saying i don't want even my enemy i don't want anybody i know i don't want any acquaintance i don't want any friend to come to this place and to come and suffer like this like i'm suffering therefore send him to my father's house let him go and tell them let him go and tell them and then he said in verse 29 and abram says unto him they have moses and the prophets let them hear them and he said nay father abraham but if one went unto them from the dead they will repent and he said unto him if they hear not moses and the prophets if they read not the scriptures if they don't believe the scriptures if they do not believe the holy righteous and this sacred righteous and this infallible word neither will they be persuaded though one rose from the dead if you have the conviction that this word we have is the only thing is the only thing that the people of the world have to be able to lead them to life eternal if that was a conviction you'll not be wasting your life wasting your time reading psychology reading philosophy and reading this one reading all the comparative religions of the world you will know there's only one way that leads to heaven you'll know there's only one book that guides us as to how to get to heaven you will know that this is the only way what he therein and that's what the lord is telling us that we develop this conviction this conviction and i pray that the lord will help us to develop it and never lose it again in jesus name Name. Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 17. Cultivating Bible based convictions. Ezekiel 3, verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. The Lord was telling me, man of conviction, I've given you the word, I've given you the authority, and I've given you the open door. I've given you a ministry unto the house of Israel. Hear the word at my mouth. Don't hear the word at the mouth of the false prophets of, you know, all these uh, religious uh, quacks that do not really have the mind of God or the word of God. Don't hear the word from theologians that have deviated. They say they're liberal theologians. But hear the word from the mouth of God. And you're far having it recorded in the bible for you hear the word at my mouth and give them warning for me in verse 18 when i say unto the wicked thou shalt surely die and thou givest him not warning nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life that same wicked man shall what tell me out loud shall die in his iniquity but his blood will i require at then if you knew if you had conviction that if you are careless if you are carefree if you're lukewarm if you shut your mouth if you don't tell the good news of salvation unto the people around you if you knew with conviction that god will require their blood at your hand you will do something differently you'll rise up immediately you will tell them you will talk to them and then it says in verse it says in verse 19 it says yet if thou want the wicked and the he turn not from his wickedness not from his wicked way 
he shall die in his iniquity but thou has delivered the soul verse 20 again when a righteous man does turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity and i lay a stumbling block before him he shall die but because thou hast not given him warning he shall die in his sin but his righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered his blood but his blood tell me the rest will i require at thine hand look up brothers and sisters you know there are some they call them pastors i don't know what god calls them they call them preachers i don't know what god calls them they call them leaders i don't know what god calls them they're so gentle and they're so nice and when they see a believer a righteous man a righteous woman in real sin like this even when it is reported to them and somebody came and said pastor this is your area it's not i'm not the pastor i'm not the leader i i, can't, I don't have any authority over them but so and so is living in adultery so and so is living in fornication he'll say i don't care about you by the grace of god my life is all right eh, since your life is all right just leave them alone god will correct them me i'm here i'm a man of peace if your pastor was there who was here before it's a man that is enforcing this enforcing that and say what did you do what did you do what did you eat what did you not eat where did you sleep last night where did you sleep not last night i'm not like that i'm a man of peace god god knows how to correct them god will handle them if those people die in that adultery in that funny and you knew and you couldn't say anything you couldn't tell them you couldn't tell them the soul that sinners tell me he shall die you couldn't open your mouth all you wanted is fellowship and friendship you wanted the people to be nice to you and to love you and to say he's a nice man he's a loving pastor he's a loving personality he doesn't cause trouble for anybody he makes everybody to save their face he makes everyone to feel at peace the lord says he will require the blood of those backsliders in your own if you had the bible conviction your life will change your leadership style will change it is because of that lack of conviction that's why many people they see something wrong they cannot correct they see something that is going the wrong direction they cannot talk or maybe you are talking before but they gave you a bad name they gave you a bad name it's, uh, it's coming it's coming it's trying to please uh, the gs it's, uh, no, it, it's, it's the uh, they call them a specialist is the one that is going to tell bearer but they don't use tail bearer they use another kind of local language and we know him is the one going to report now go God, what we know you have seen us we know you know what we are doing and we know we know you will go and tell him go and tell him and then you will come up they are weakened their hands are hanging down they drop their head I mean, well, why do you say i'm going to tell him is that my responsibility i am not like that you are like that you're a good man a good man that doesn't want backsliders to perish but now you want them to perish you say i don't want a bad name you have a good name here but you are going to perish you have a good name here but when the trumpet shall sound and the lord is saying the people that know the people that are doing evil and you will never open your mouth and they die in their sin and you know they are the, they are the acres you know the acres you know where they're keeping the wedge of gold and you know where they're keeping all those instruments of sin and you never open your mouth to say anything yes they will die Achan will die in the sin if he does not repent but God will require their blood out of your hand I pray God will deliver us you know this kind of cowardice coming to people no boldness no conviction and no courage fearlessness to be able to call a spade a spade and if they're talking to us at all they'll be talking in a parable they'll be talking with illustration they'll be saying you know pastor i just want to tell you that i think you need to pray more because it's not everybody that is uh, all right there are some people there they are living i don't want to mention any name but there are some people there come on <laughs> don't talk to me like that am i going to find out i'm going to go one by one uh, are you the one they're talking about tell me i said are you are you then i go on i go on one by one i've been wasting my time why don't you know them why don't you tell me if you cannot handle why don't you say that's the man that's the woman and then i will call them i will say so and so told me that you are doing this and you are doing that and then they'll come to you and say were you the one that said it then you say yes i am 
there you're a real child of God. I said you're a real child of God. The courage of Bible bears conviction. I pray God will bring us back to that in Jesus' name. Look at it in verse 21. Nevertheless, if that one, the righteous man, that the righteous sin not, and he does not sin, he shall surely live because he is one. And also thou hast delivered thy soul. You will be delivered in Jesus name. After having that Bible based conviction. What next do you point number two now? Commitment to Bible based convictions. Commitment to Bible based convictions. We are looking at second Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5. I am reading from verses 10 and 11. Commit me to Bible based conviction. Look at your convictions again and dig it up again and bring it near to you again. And look at that conviction and says, This is the way I was, and this is who I'm going to remain. This Bible will be my standard, and anything different, I have nothing to do with any wishy washy kind of worship or any wishy washy kind of commitment. My commitment will be to Bible based conviction. We're looking at second. Corinthians chapter 5 verses 10 and 11 for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done whether it be good or bad knowing therefore the terror of the Lord will persuade men knowing therefore the judgment and the terror and knowing the wrath of God that will come upon sinners and the unbelievers because of that we persuade men those are people that have commitment to the uh, to the conviction Bible based convictions that they have we're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 5 Acts of the Apostles chapter 5 I'm reading from verse 29 and when they had brought them they searched them before the council and the high priest and asked them saying did not we strictly command you that he should not teach in this name and behold ye have filled jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us that's what they call a challenge they brought the apostles together and they challenged them before i go on let me explain to you you know these people that challenged them and this world that said didn't we tell you didn't we straightly command you you shouldn't talk to anybody about this man and not only that even if we are saying good good things that he healed the sick he made the limb to walk eh, that will even we don't even want that but you even went beyond that and you are making us now guilty and you bring this man's blood upon us of course you are the one that said crucify him and let his blood be upon us you said so now and that's exactly what we are telling the people that the, your leaders the crucified christ the prince of life why are you afraid of the consequence of what you have done but now they said don't say that again now these people that threatened them they had authority and they had the power if they wanted to they could kill these people they could really look at verse 33 when they had that they were caught to the heart and took counsel to do what tell me out loud what does that mean to slay them to kill them now look up here anybody that challenges today today let's say for example in the church here we are in the church or a pastor in the church and there are members in the church that they don't appreciate what you're saying the way you preach the doctrine you lay down the things you emphasize and your leadership style because of your conviction in the bible they don't like what you say they cannot kill you they can't slay you all they can do, they can rebel against you, they can slander you, they can tell lies against you, they can avoid you, they can frown at you. They cannot, they cannot sleep, they cannot kill you. They cannot. And even these people that knew that they canceled at the power, the authority, and if they were angry enough, they could kill them all the same in the face of danger. In the face of death, see what they said in verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, 
we ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom tell me, whom tell me. Uh -uh. They, they were saying that you want to bring his blood upon us. Now, if somebody told you that is what we said, we are telling you again, ye slew and hang on a tree. You did it, don't didn't you? You see, they, they laid it on them. They were not afraid to repeat what they had preached before in their absence. And that's what the Lord is telling you. That the commitment you have, the consecration you have, that you lay your life on the line, that this is thus says the Lord, and this is the word of the Lord. And because this is the word of the Lord, we don't care what the enemies will do, and what the slanderers will say, or what anybody will do. They still told the people, and then look at it, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. In verse 31, him as God exalted with his right hand to be a prince, and his savior and to give repentance to who to israel and the forgiveness of sin and we are his witnesses of these things and so is all also the holy ghost whom god has given to them that obey him they said we're bold enough to tell you we're courageous enough to tell you that this is the word of the lord those are people that have conviction that in the face of danger in the face of difficulty in the face of all the challenges in the face of even possible deaths they were still willing to affirm the word of the lord and the lord is bringing us to that point i said the lord is bringing us to that point by the grace of God, in the strength of the Lord, in the boldness and the courage of the Spirit of the Lord, we're going to be able to declare the word of God without fear, without favor, in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 37. Matthew chapter 10, we're looking at verse 37. Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. Here's what it says, He that loveth father or mother, more than me is not worthy of me. The Lord is telling us that maybe your mother will say, My son, I'm hearing that you know you are such a false speaker and is such a forceful preacher that the people in our town they are saying this is what they are going to do you must love god and love jesus and love the message of salvation and the souls of the people you're reaching out to you love them more than your life more than your mother more than your father more than your wife more than your husband more than your children more than anybody he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me you know there are some sons they are getting older now they're getting of age now and they understand their commitment but they don't want their father to be committed that way they understand commitment they don't want their mother to be committed that way and they said mommy don't, don't go too far serve god and go to the that's okay and be a woman coordinator and be a woman leader and be this and be that but don't go too far so that we can still have the liberty to do what we want to do and so we can do this and do this if you are trying to go too far we know how to stop you we're going to do this and do that and then all this to get some people to go and report you that your children have done this and then they will stop you and because of that you obey your children when you obey the word of the Lord and the conviction that is based on the word of God. And the Lord is saying, if you love your children, your son or your daughter, your wife or your husband, your relatives, more than me, you are not worthy of him. He says in verse 38, he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me he that findeth his life shall lose it and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it i pray you'll find it we're looking at luke chapter 14 luke chapter 14 commitment commitment to bible based conviction conviction that is based on the word of god we're not talking of hasty kind of conviction you know we're not talking of people that say some foolish things they're going to do this they're not going to do this and not based on the word of god we're talking about people that know about salvation people that know about the importance and the essence of evangelism people that know about the indispensability of holiness follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord and you're 
committed to that commitment the bible bears conviction luke chapter 14 and i'm reading there from verse 26 if any man come to me and hate not father or mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters yea and his own life also he cannot be my disciple when your life is based on that and you have conviction on the basis of that and you have a kind of commitment that you know some people they might be shedding tears and crying ah my husband are you going to do like this are you going to be committed like this are you going to do this or that and then you still you know it's okay eh, my dear darling because of you and because I will lessen my commitment I'll lessen my devotion I'll lessen my sacrifice I'll lessen this or that and the Lord is saying if you put your wife above him if you put your husband above him if you put your children above him if you put yourself above the Lord he says you are not worthy of me you are not worthy of me means you are not worthy of heaven you cannot live with me here you cannot live with me in heaven verse 26 again if any man any man any man you know some of these people that uh, they think they outgrow the word of god they think they outgrow the commitment and conviction to the word of god any man a bishop an overseer a pastor a leader any man a woman a man if anyone a long-standing christian or just a new believer if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters yea and his own life also he cannot be my disciple i will be his disciple i said i will be his disciple you'll be his disciple in jesus name but you know what makes us you know what makes us to a kind of chicken out and we make ourselves cheap that we cannot obey the word of god anymore is because either because we're too we're too self-conscious too self-conscious i don't want you know people to hate me or push me aside or to be talking about me or to feel this about forget yourself i don't do whatever you're doing because you want a good name you want appreciation you want this you want that lay your life on the line and say this is what to do i read it in the bible and because i read it in the bible that is where i stand anytime you are praying you want to take a decision make a consecration you're not thinking of what will daddy say about this what will mommy say about this now what will my wife say about this i think my wife may not appreciate if i go this far i think my husband may not appreciate if i go this far i i i don't think that you know this will even become convenient for me i think I'm, I, it's going to be inconvenient for me if i just you know put myself under the yoke i will evangelize i will plant churches i'll go to all those new territories i'll do the i think i need to be very careful now because i i, I need some rest i need this i need that when you're considering yourself like that before you can make a commitment consecration to the lord you are think you're putting yourself above the commission that the lord has given us that's why it says in verse 27 and whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple you will be his disciple i said you will be his disciple and you will continue following after persecution will come you'll continue following after the lord in jesus name second timothy second timothy chapter three i'm reading there from verse 12 second timothy chapter three we're looking at verse 12 it says ye and all that will live godly in christ jesus shall do what shall suffer persecution and you're thinking maybe it will be less it will be less you know sometimes uh, people used to think they say now this is a new year this is a new year and at the end of the year all those things have passed <laughs> i understand all those things have passed you know what has passed all those works of the devil they are gone in jesus name and all the sicknesses they are gone in jesus name all the poverty and all the promises god has given us in this new year we're going to have them in jesus name but you know what never passes away between uh, 19, uh, 2010 and 2011 there was persecution last year there's good persecution this year i said there's good persecution this year ah you are gone give me a good amen persecution doesn't stop old year gone new year has come 
The new year doesn't mean that this year there's no persecution. Everybody will just you know, be lying flat before me this year. And those who persecuted me last year, they will not because there is a new year. The new year has cancelled persecution. That's a lie. Don't deceive yourself. Look at the next verse there. It says, But evil men and seducers shall do what? Shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. As one year passes, another year comes. Those persecutors, they might even change their methods, but the persecutors are still there. But then it says in verse 14, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, I will continue. I said I will continue. If the persecutors double their efforts, I double my strength. I double my courage. I double my, I double my fearlessness as they increase in evil and increase in goodness. I said you'll increase in goodness. You know, if the persecutors double their efforts and you stay at the same level of courage of last year, they are double. You are single. Your courage of last year will not match will not match the doubled effort of the persecutors of this year. So, as evil men and seducers and persecutors are waxing worse and worse, you in the strength of the Lord in the power of the lord if you're going to match them that are getting worse and worse what are you going to do better and better higher and higher stronger and stronger greater and greater it has happened to you in fact you know what i'm going to tell you if you really want to outshine them when they double you triple if they double their wickedness and they double their persecution and they double their evil you triple your courage and fearlessness and your commitment to the word of the lord and they will never be able to get at you in jesus name i come to point number three now courage courage for bible based convictions courage for bible based conviction are you still there i said are you still there we're looking at deuteronomy chapter 31 deuteronomy chapter 31 i'm reading there from verse 6 deuteronomy chapter 31 and we're looking at it from verse 6 but verse 6 here is what it says look at it now in verse 6 and it says be strong and of a good courage who is the lord talking to here i said who is the lord talking to here he's talking to me I said he's talking to me uh, you, you know if you go from place to place there's a kind of courage you need in nigeria and when you go to east africa there's another kind of courage that you need when you go to south africa yeah there's another kind of courage you need and then when you leave africa and then you go to asia another kind of courage you need and it's saying asian courage american courage european courage south african courage east african courage god will pack everything together and put it on you in jesus name you know the courage that anywhere you are the courage the people you have not seen or people you have not known and the lord is saying i'm sending you there i'm sending you there i'm sending you there and whoever you may meet and whoever may come across your way the appropriate courage for the appropriate people the lord will give to you in jesus name and you know sometimes even when you go to the village those of us in the city the kind of courage we need in the city is very much different from the kind of courage you need when you go to the village in the village where they say you you cannot do this you cannot do that you know look at our city at lagos here as you look at lagos you go from that place i don't want to mention you know so if i mention those places you'll not know them you go from days to days to days no tree there nothing there and then you just say all the courage you need is just to be able to face that man at the bus stop do you know jesus christ simple courage elementary courage everybody say elementary courage but you know we wanted to have a crusade or something in a, one of the cities i don't want to mention and there was a tree there and that tree they said the tree had been there for 400 years and that anybody because we need to clear that ground clear everywhere and cut down that thing so that we can have a good view and have a large crowd over there and then they said anybody that cuts down that tree the person before seven days ought to happen <laughs> tell me looks like you're coming from that area they said the person will die and then our state overseer there at that time he called the members of the church you need courage in that place 
I said you need courage in that place. Not you know the courage over here, the courage you need here when you are going out there and somebody say, Where are you going? You know, I must be courageous now to tell him how to go and drink water. And they, go and go and come back in time. But thank God I was courageous. If I would if I wasn't courageous, it would have sent me back. I'm going the pastor said, Have courage, I'm going to have courage. <laughs> you know, elementary courage. Everybody say elementary courage. But you know, over there, our city over there at that time, he did a Jericho man, called all those people together, and they went around, went around. And I'm telling you, the people that tried that before, that did anything, that the villagers said, if you cut down this thing, you die, they died. But then they marched around, and then they got people with axe, and they cut the axe, then they cut the tree, and then uprooted everything, leveled every. By the time I got to that place, the whole place was level. I saw a sea of hairs like this, and I began to preach, and I told you I preached. I said, I preach. And then there was one woman. That woman came from a nearby village, hands paralyzed, legs paralyzed, and couldn't uh, you know, do anything at all. They picked her up and put her into a lorry. And then in that crusade, blind eyes opened, goiters vanished away, uh, you know, big bellies, everything came down. And that woman was not healed at the, at the crusade ground for a purpose. God had a purpose. The villagers were wanted to plant deeper light church in that place. They said, never never other churches can come but you people that go against idolatry you'll never have your church in this village and that woman came from that village and then when they were coming up from Lilori, everybody went down this one went down remained herself alone and she was crying i'm a terrible sinner and i've repented i've called upon the lord he didn't heal me and then what what they wanted to carry her like this the holy ghost came upon her yeah. hands all right legs all right and she jumped down from the bus from the lorry all the villagers came around all the farmers idol worshippers in that place they declared two days public holiday for celebration to celebrate the power of the lord what i'm saying is it was a courage the courage the courage of those believers in that place that then the villagers invited or said now deeper life you are the only church we're wanting this. come and put your church here that's the courage we need and by the grace of god this afternoon i pass that courage unto you every place the soul of a fool shall turn upon the lord has given you in jesus name the courage that will kill goliath the courage that will kill all the lions i have a message for you tomorrow morning when i come tomorrow morning i'm going to show you something i don't think you've ever seen it in the bible but tomorrow morning there's something coming your way and i'm telling you that after you leave this congress that thing they call fear that thing they call fright will never be in your life again where are you i said where are you why don't you stand up and tell the lord the courage the courage not just uh, you know all this uh, lagos street courage not the elementary college i'm talking about courage in the village and courage in the city and courage in all those difficult places the courage that will come to your heart and you say i will do it i can make it bible based conviction the courage that will make you to be able to say i'm going there i am going there no matter what lion no matter what philistine and no matter what enemy no matter what magician and no matter the herbalist that is standing in the way i am going there i am going there i am going there you have the courage of conviction the conviction that accepted him and be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god and because of that courage you you're going with the message you're going with the word you're going with the truth and anywhere you are nobody will be able to stand before you no man no man no magician or no no uh, no herbalist will be able to stand before you courage courage the courage of conviction the courage of conviction the courage of conviction is coming upon your life right now you will do the work of God. You will go the places where the Lord is sending you. Because he's giving you that courage now. The courage of conviction. Have not I commanded you be strong and of a good courage. That's the kind of courage we need in the village. That's the kind of courage we need in the north. That's the kind of courage we need in the south. That's the kind of courage we need in the city. That's the kind of courage we need in other parts of Africa. Anywhere you are, anywhere you are, the Bible-based conviction that brings courage upon your life. 
the Lord will give you. The Lord will give you. The Lord will give you. He has given you already. Go in the strength of the Lord. Go in the strength of the Lord. And say, Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. Put that courage within me. The courage of conviction.